drunk to fuck buggery, crawls into a cab and begins bending the ear off an in-work driver and out-of-work bricklayer about a TV show in which a politician claimed 5,000 euro for office toilet roll. The driver is getting angry because the Lonergan twins, with the two ends mind, are lying on a square of carpet in the middle of the road, bent the bells off each other with hose pipes, again. After they get dragged off home by their mammy, the driver tells Coop Cullen that sure the banks only have the country ruined, ruined, <coughs> and anyways, didn't his cousin hear that the politician was forced to sniff the bishop's sandwiches when he was a child? When the politician was a child, that is, not the bishop. The bishop was a child once too, of course. He played the harpsichord with precocious talent and lived in a house with a sundial in the garden. But that's another story. Rome caught wind of his olfactory predilections and sent him off to Guatemala, where he was put in charge of making packed lunches for the local primary school. Cucullin laughs at this so hard that the all-day breakfast roll he's eaten spills down the seat. The driver turps him out, half racked in the maggot, and half because he vowed to never allow another French pajaza loaf in his car after that bleeding goal in Paris. Cucullin swears he's done with drinking and falls asleep on the front lawn. In the morning, either one, your man driving the trimmer doesn't see him and chops him up. The Greek is palpable. Or two, Hugh Cullen wakes up before the trimmer, but still too late for work, and gets a fierce falcon off the husband. And after a blazing blue barney, they fold into each other's arms like ironing boards, because deep down, they both know that sure the banks only have the country ruined, ruined. And anyways, how is anyone meant to make a living anymore at all? Thank you.